Brother Andy, a hand for coming to the Thanks, Brother Tom. It's been awesome just to be here together this morning, isn't it? It's yes, nice yes. when, uh, you know, I really appreciate you, Brother, that you just are willing to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, you, Every one of us here have to deal with that, don't we? Uh, there was a shift in my ministry some years back where I was getting ready to go overseas and, and train uh, pastors overseas. And uh, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to prepare? And he said, yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and what that means is staying filled with the word and filled with the Holy Spirit. And so that when you get up, that whatever comes out of you is what God put in you. Because there's nothing else inside of you. You've become a shell, a uh, funnel for God to flow through. Uh, and, you know, tonight, to this morning, kind of, the, the, I've, my kids have been watching this show on the internet called Chopped, and I don't know if any of you have seen that. Uh, it's these chefs, they get like five ingredients, and they have to make these dishes, and they have like 30 minutes to make, and they come up with these elaborate things, and I've got a, quite a few different ingredients floating around, so I'm gonna, it's going to be interesting what Holy Spirit brings out of the oven um, today, because... Uh, I just came back from from Zanzibar, uh, which is a Muslim country. It's it's 98% Muslim, um, and the interesting thing about being uh, and what I, the interesting thing about being a believer who's born again, and when you face Islam, is that it helps you see more clearly the distinction between this is religion, this is life, this is religion. This is life. And so, you know, I've just kind of got a lot of that stuff percolating around in me. Um, And so in John chapter 14, Jesus says, you know, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. Earlier, just in that chapter, and that whole discussion was prompted by one of his disciples saying, Lord, just just show us the Father. And Jesus opens his mouth. And out comes these words, have I been so long with you, and yet you have not known me. You know, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he had simply become the footprint of the Spirit of God on on planet Earth. He had become a shell, a funnel. Through, that received, and all only what he received is what came out of him. And, you know, that to me is the dividing line between religion and Chris, true Christianity. Um, and so a lot of times I talk about churchianity. Does that make sense? Uh, and it's uh, what I found is that it's really... Uh, until you get out of that matrix, and because we are ministers, the thing that's really on my heart is to help us kind of do a gut check of are we in religion or are we in life? Or Because you've got a lot of people who are coming to you over and over, and if you're not careful, we make a lot of assumptions about what people believe And what I saw, just kind of what what you see in religion, is everybody wants to be blessed. And everybody wants instructions from God about how to make life work. So that God's on your side in every endeavor. And if we're not careful, we totally bypass the whole point of what what the Bible's about and what Jesus is about. And we just use the Bible in a very religious way to try to find our formulas and our, you know, what do we need to adjust and how do we need to tweak what we believe and what we say and what we do so that we can manage our lives better. We want God, we want just enough of God to give us advice and assistance to accomplish our goals and to manage our lives and to make our lives better. But we don't want a God who says it won't work. You have to lay your life down. You have to become dead and let me give you a brand new life. And that's what I've come to do. I have not come to improve you. I have not come to fix you. I have not come to help you. I have come to replace you because you were born broken. 
And the only way to fix you is to take you out back and in a very loving way and all those things that you really want to be rid of in your heart of hearts. It's not because I don't love you, but because I do love you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to become one with you. And when I'm up there hanging on that cross, it's not just me dying. I'm putting you to death. I'm taking you out back behind the barn and going, now you're free. (laughs) Because dead people don't sin. And dead people don't have insecurity. And dead people don't have selfishness and ambition and jealousy. And dead people don't have pride and hurt feelings. And so... When we learn to say, yes, God, that's what I need. I need to be absolutely dead to myself as being something independent from you that I'm looking to you simply for advice and blessing and, and, and those kind of things. We need a new life. We need a new relationship. And I remember the day that God revealed to me that, Andy, your Christian life, he said this in a very loving way. He said, Andy, your Christian life sucks. <laughs> but my son's life is beautiful. Yeah, is. So you can try to use yeah. my son to try to build your Christian life. Or here's my proposal. We just set your Christian life aside. Right. And yeah. you learn to let my son be your life. Let him live his life in you and yeah. through you. And I remember, you know, think, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks because what God spoke to me out of that is in the scriptures that the gospel is this. You know, orphans are used to looking at other people and what they've got and feeling like that's for them, but it's not for me, don't we? And so I go around the United States and around the world equipping believers and helping pastors to help mobilize everybody to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ. You know, part of what he said is, whoever believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And we agree with that. We think that's faith. But how many of us are actually doing the works of Jesus? And so that's faith. Faith isn't what you agree with. Faith is what you live by. Right? The just will live by faith. It's not just you write it down and say, yeah, that's what I agree with. Mm-hmm. It's, oh, so, so a lot of times we, we let the, the book knowledge of what we agree with get in the way and deceive ourselves that that's what living faith is. <coughs> and then you end up with other people that feel completely beat down. Yeah, I know it's for me, but I don't see it. And they're like, something's wrong with me. And they're just me, 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 me. <laughs> on the flip side of it, right? And then sometimes you end up, as ministers, we pound our people with this is what should be happening, this is what should be happening. Because deep down inside, we believe it. It should be happening. But preaching what should be happening is not fixing things. It can just pile the condemnation on top of people. So now you've got a bunch of people who believe this should be happening, and we're something's wrong with us. And so we're taking what's not happening and making that our identity. Mm-hmm. We're living as orphans on the inside. Yeah, wow, wow. Good. You know, and Jesus said the only solution to not being an orphan on the inside is to have a dynamic, living, internal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You, Your Christian, your relationship with God is no more real than your relationship with Holy Spirit. That's right. If your relationship with God is simply I'm on the outside and God's up there and you don't realize that God has moved inside of you and you are learning that the life of Christ in you is your life and you have now become a container, a host of a different life form. You've become a partaker of the divine nature and that God has said to you, I give you the relationship that my son has with me as your relationship. This is a gift for you to enjoy. And so instead of being like the orphan sitting on the outside, you know, watching people eating their nice Christmas dinner on the inside, seeing the family all huggy and smoozy and wondering, you know, gosh, if I could just get a piece of bread. 
you know, sometimes that's what Christians are like because we have this tendency to interpret God through our circumstances. Don't we? Yeah, yeah, we do. Rather than this, we interpret God through Jesus Christ, Amen. through His finished work. God demonstrates His love for us in this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God laid his life down for you in Christ. It wasn't just the Son. Do you hear? The Father is in the Son doing, I mean, Jesus is offering himself through the eternal spirit. This is God saying, this much I love you. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit together. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. A lot of people like Jesus. They feel like Jesus loves them, but they feel like the Father, you know. He was just wanting to get at them, you know. But then Jesus threw himself in the way, you know. And there's an aspect of the atonement that that's absolutely right. But there's another aspect. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. God's not schizophrenic. This is a unified plan. Amen. Okay? Yes. Now... Part of what I see in the body of Christ sometimes, and as ministers, that that we 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 preach the lifestyle of the Christian yes. apart from the source of life. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we preach about this is how to be a good Christian father or a good Christian businessman or a good Christian uh, character or a good Christian giving, and we do that and we kind of assume Jesus in the whole mix. And people, you know, try hard to be like Jesus, and then they end up feeling like an orphan again. (laughs) You know? Uh, And so instead of realizing that that Jesus, who came and lived, now lives inside of me. He is my life. And so everything that he did, he is able to do through me. Everything that's in him is inside of me. So God's not asking for anything out of me except what he's already put inside of me. And so, you know, getting back to that, the you know, some of the things that were said, some of the reasons were dry sponges, you know. We tell people, you know, the, the dry sponge illustration. We do whatever's in us. Our soul is like a sponge. And we can't give out what we haven't already absorbed. But we're always absorbing something. And that's the thing is that we have got to get over to. We have got to get back to teaching and bringing people into a lifestyle of dynamic interaction with the Holy Spirit of God in Christ. That it's got to be a 24-7, not just... You encounter God in prayer, and now you shut your your prayer closet, and you walk out and go do life on your own resources. Right, yeah, right. But that our we our life has become uh, a an opportunity through which Christ lives through us as us. Yeah. In First John chapter four, somewhere <laughs> it says, "I got it in the chapter at least." All right. <laughs> That, that he died so that we might live through him. Right, right. God doesn't just... Absolutely. And here's the thing that helps me. We have this tendency to conceive of ourselves as independent persons. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an independent person from Tom, etc. But part of that is because of the brain damage that came in to the, through the fall. God conceives of himself... As Father shares his life completely with the Son on the inside. The Son receives life from the Father on the inside and then manifests that forth as his image. And then with that life that he's contained from the Father, he receives all the Father is and pours that back into the Father. Does nothing for himself. Everything for the Father. And the Spirit of God is that way in which that they commune back and forth. The Spirit does nothing from Himself or for Himself, but everything from the Father, through the Son, back and forth. And this was what we were created to bear that image, to contain that image. That we were created as physical beings. That's what's in us. Right? 
so that the living God could live inside of us and manifest what he's yeah. like and make yeah. himself visible on planet Earth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, as how, as we know him as our life, right. Right. that we were, we were predestined from before yeah. the foundations of the world mm -hmm. to be welcomed into the fellowship of the Godhead. How? As sons right. in Christ. Yeah. To, to have the relationship that the Son has with the Father. Right. As our relationship with the Father. Yeah. This isn't something we earn. It's not something we make happen. Yeah. It's something yeah. that you just get by being yeah. born. Yeah. Some people are just born into a life of just, you got extraordinary opportunity and resource. When you were born again, yeah. Yeah. Woo, baby! <laughs> Man, you got so much. You got so much. You became an heir of God with, in Christ. You received the divine nature of God. You received the spirit of truth. You can't be cursed anymore because Christ became a curse for you. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. And we got so many Christians running around trying to figure out how to get blessed. Just what we ought to be doing is proclaiming, this is what you are. Yeah. Get rid of the orphan mindset. Yeah. Because when orphans get religious, they do it out of a spirit of slavery, yeah. a spirit of fear. Paul said we have not received a spirit of fear again, leading to slavery, right? right, right. What does a slave do? A slave's like, you know what, the only reason, the only thing that God really wants out of me is the work he can get out of me. That's why I get to stay in the house. Because I do everything that God wants. Right? I get to stay in. And the only reason I work is because I'm afraid if I stop doing the works, that I'm going to be kicked out on my ear. Right? That's why slaves get to be in the house. But you know what? When the prodigal came running home, the father went running to the prodigal. Put on the best robe and said, this is my beloved son. Right? right? Broke all shame off of him. Wouldn't allow anybody to say anything bad about him. Gave him the ring of authority. That's the father's credit card. Put new shoes on him. The bread, best robe. Had a feast and celebrated over the son. Amen. Amen. He didn't say, hey, my son's home so we can get the barn built. Do you understand? And so often we are... We are trying to work people into their identity. Yeah. And we need to establish identity because when a son realizes that he's a son, now he sees I'm an owner of everything. That's right. Now I walk in right. dominion. This is my home. This is my business. And I'm not a slave. Uh -huh. That's right. You understand? If I break my leg and can't work, Hey, it's still mine. Father's still going to feed me. He's going to put clothes on my back. Yeah, I am loved with an everlasting love. Amen. So we need to understand that if I have a bad temper and disagree with my father, you know what? He's still going to feed me at the end of the day. And we're going to work things out until I get my head screwed on straight. Right? But you've got a lot of people in the church that are like the older brother. I've been working my tail off. And how is it that these new people are walking in signs and wonders and miracles and winning people to Christ and acting like they're having so much fun? And, you know, all I get is the gift of helps. Come on. Good word. Come on. You know, or all I got is the gift of teaching. Come on. I want to be able to do the miracles. Well, the Father says to the older brothers, Everything I have belongs to you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody taught you that this was your gift and you're, you need to learn your gift because that's you're stuck with it. Learn to use it and be a blessing and appreciate other people. What Paul was teaching was not that this is your gift and you're stuck with it, but the gift that you're manifesting is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And all of the gifts are in the Holy Spirit. So if you've got Holy Spirit, everything in Him is already in you. Appreciate your brothers and sisters in the way Christ flows through them. But if you want something that you see, it's already in you. Go after it. Go after it. So I learned. 
I was equipped to prophesy. I was equipped yeah. to evangelize. Right. I was equipped yeah, yeah. to heal the sick. Boy, Why? Yeah. Because the equippers in the body of Christ are to equip you to walk in what they walk in. Yeah. Until we all look like Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's because you are not an orphan. And you are not a slave. You are a son. So walk in the in the walk of Jesus. That's walk right. by yeah. Him. That's, right. That's what yeah. the Word of God yes, yes, yes. Uh, teaches. Yes. So how do we do that? I'm going to give one last thing. In John chapter... Uh, yeah, it's still going. i got five <laughs> minutes left. That's when they pulled all the ingredients together, guys. <laughs> all right. So a lot of times we get that. How do we get that here? How does that change the way we have a quiet time? How does that change the way we go to work? John chapter 5, I think it's verse 39 and 40. Jesus says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have life. But it's these that bear witness of me, yet you won't come to me so that you may have life. So this is what... This is the dividing line between the way religion used to, uses the scriptures versus the way Christians yes. should use the scriptures, mm -hmm. right? We don't go to the scriptures saying, hey, God, just show me what I need to do, and that's right. going to be life for me. Show me who you are. We go to the scriptures saying, show me my Lord. Yeah. Show me who you are. Show me the Father. Yeah. Show me your heart. Show me your ways. Yeah. And then what do we do? We come to him. Yeah. We get spirit to spirit, heart yeah. to heart, face to face. Abba, Father, because you are sons. He yeah. sent the spirit yeah. of the son yeah. into your heart doing what? Crying. Crying. Mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's not the cry of an orphan. I wish I had a daddy. Right. Right. Have yeah. I been so long with you? Right. Yeah. You've got it. This is a cry of a child. Ah, daddy's home! I'm home! A big hug cry. In every situation, when you face the challenge, I'm a father. I got a big daddy. I'm in his embrace. When you're in everything. So you bring in people to live in that spirit. That's the spirit of the son. That's the spirit of the son. And so then, what is it? Then the works that Jesus does, He can do through you. So you teach them, you begin to walk with them. Yeah. Don't accept sickness. Right. Don't don't yeah. because how many people? Jesus said, "If you've seen me, you've seen the Father." How many people did Jesus go around making sick? Yeah. Right. How many people did He go around leaving sick? Mm -hmm. Yet we have seen in my ministry great healing uh, evangelist uh, uh, promo here. I have seen people with cancer die. That I prayed for. Okay? But do I let that become my source of truth in no. interpreting God? No. Or do no. I say, you know what? I, that Jesus is my identity of what God is like, what He does, and who yes. the truth is. And He lives in me. So until what's coming out of me looks like what comes out of Jesus, I am still growing. And I won't blame another person. Because Jesus never blames someone else. I will take responsibility to grow up into his image. Yeah. And you know what? There are people who are alive today because I didn't stop the first time I saw somebody die. Do you understand that? Yeah. There are people who are living pain-free today because I didn't stop the first time I did see somebody get healed by right. That's good. And that's what we need to start doing is we need to stop interpreting life as an orphan and using the scriptures as a slave. Yes. And we need yes. to go to use the scriptures to see who Jesus is and then see that we don't just come to him, but the life that's in him now is our life. They won't come to me so that they might receive life. You understand that he's just an advertisement for the life that he put yes. inside right. of you. Yes. Right. He's the full manifestation, the full flower of the seed that was planted in you. Yeah. You need to understand that that's God's vision for you. He yeah. sowed a son to reap a son. That's right. That's right. That's who you are to God. So He makes a distinction between uh, everything else that doesn't. If you want to be free from it and doesn't look like Jesus, thank God it was crucified two thousand years ago. Do not let that hold you back because it is not holding God's heart back from you. That's right. He's in Christ, Amen. and you're in Christ, Amen. and that's where He meets you. Yeah. That's where he sees you. 
And that's why we can be loved and love others yeah. and pour out power and grace. Yeah, that's right. So I'm finished now. We're about to go to lunch. I just want to let anybody know we're not going to be able to stay for the after the lunch section. But while we're here, I will uh, be happy to minister to anybody who has physical healing in their body. Um, and I'll say in the sanctuary, I guess, as everybody goes to get meals. And then if uh, once we're done praying for folks, we're going to uh, take off. We do have contact information, a little lavender brochure on that little small back table there. Um, if there's ever any, anything that I can do for any of you, we go to small groups, conferences, churches, those kind of things. Uh, our motto is have Jesus, will travel. And, uh, and our desire really is to have a relationship not just be a once and done sort of thing. Right, right. We like to help be an outside resource for churches, and uh, we like to build a relationship that we can come back and, and those kind of things. So we'd love to get to know you a little bit more. And yeah. Tom knows me well, so feel free to ask Tom all the, all the goods on.